A huge thanks to BetterHelp for sponsoring today's episode. Sometimes taking steps toward mental health can feel daunting, but BetterHelp makes it easier. To get started, you just answer a few questions about your needs and preferences in therapy. That way, BetterHelp can match you with the right therapist from their network. You can message your therapist at any time and schedule live sessions when it's convenient for you. If your therapist isn't the right fit for any reason, you can switch to a new therapist at no additional charge. Our staff is included in the 2 million plus people who have taken steps forward for mental health with BetterHelp. And we highly recommend speaking to a trusted licensed therapist. Get 10% off your first month at betterhelp.com slash The link is in the description. Oh, sh- sorry. Movies that make COVID an unnecessary part of the plot. Ooh, nice. A period piece. I sure hope they got Edith Head out of internment to do the costumes. It's from Miles. Not understanding the dynamics of a live broadcast feed. What can I do? Handle him no. now. Insinuating there has ever been a Zoom call ever in the history of Zoom calls where the participants heard and spoke things in complete synchronization and without a single second of lag. Genius always looks like insanity at first though, right? Like the movie Brick. I'm a hard light on climate change. If that scares you, go stick your head back in the sand. This is not how political candidates courting votes usually speak. This is how political commentators usually speak. A politician would be more likely to say, I believe the science behind climate change is real and serious and I'm the one who can fix it, directly followed by exactly zero examples of ways to do so. Everything is so woke these days, it's out of control. Yes. Love you, yes. There's no possible way that A, Bertie has a straight visual shot to any corner of this crowded room while sitting on the floor, or B, would have been able to hear him say this with all the COVID pod shenanigans going on all around her. She appears to be pointing at this corner to see and hear this guy, how? Yes, of course, someone like Duke would have a Scarface poster hanging up in his house. I think that's what the joke is. Duke sees himself as a man of power, even though he isn't. But can we just send the fact that it's Scarface? Props crew prop for making this an actual stereo but if you're going to design a hidden button, don't you think it should be somewhere a little more off-center? Finding the boxes click Taurus should be much more difficult. It's a compass. Mom. <laughs> Jackie Hoffman is the best. So, a few is a beautiful musical puzzle based on just one tune. Songs as a musical puzzle? Is this movie stealing from the January Man? Also, thank God Birdie is having a party in the middle of a pandemic so that Yo-Yo Ma can solve the music puzzle for them. Or else, how do they figure this out? See the center wheel lifted up? Sure, a fugue is, as defined by Yo-Yo, a musical puzzle that when you layer the tune on top of itself, it becomes a beautiful new structure. But that isn't an intuitive clue whatsoever. How does that clue lead one to think, I need to lift the center wheel? Anyway, we're all thinking the same thing at this point, but only I've had the balls to say it. Fugues. A curious thing happens from the time CNN interviews Claire to now. The coronavirus cases go down globally from somewhere over 4 million to just over 800,000 when they interview Dr. Fauci. The United States goes from just over a million to just over 160,000. And they've changed the graphic from globally to global cases. Feels like the movie took real footage of CNN's interview with Dr. Fauci and did their own shit during Claire's interview. Or it's just an average day on CNN. The way Helen solves this box being mirrored by the way she solves the final puzzle of the movie is such beautiful thematic disruptive symmetry that I have to peel another sin layer off. Blanc, I saw you go in the engine room. Movie introduces the possibility of Benoit teaming with Jessica Fletcher and doesn't follow through. Also, this marks Angela Lansbury and Stephen Sondheim's final appearances on film. So here are a couple more sins for these legends no longer being among us. Lockdown hasn't been easy for any of us. But Philip told me you haven't left the bath for a week. Baths are gross, even at reasonable amounts of time. You're basically just stewing in your own filth. Add to that, once you're in there for a while, the water gets cold. I'm just saying, I don't care how bored he is. I'm guessing Blanc isn't likely to sit there long enough to be germ soup or freeze his Benoit balls off. Did you solve the murder of, oh, what's your name? That, um, the, the belly dancer with the thing and the thing. Spoiling the plot to tend to mercies, a Knives Out Glass Onion Benoit Blanc Netflix sprinkle mystery. Title Miles? No, never met. Did Miles not send a manifest with the boat? Or even to sudden throat spray Ethan Hawk? I know he's an idiot, but with that much money, certainly he pays someone to keep the uninvited off the island. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Greece. Ah, sudden throat spray Ethan Hawk, who I just mentioned, but I'm still somehow surprised by this extra snap bracelet that shouldn't exist. It's amazing how mysterious Ethan Hawk doesn't bother to get out of the car and give Andy the weird COVID shot during this entire dramatic entrance. He shows up in the background as the scene ends, but he just seems to be having a conversation with her. And I have a sneaking suspicion it's not even Ethan Hawk anymore. The question isn't why do you invite him? 
It's why did she show up? No, why did he invite her is a good question, actually. If they just went through heavy litigation and had a major falling out, what would the purpose be of inviting her? Aside from the there's no movie if it doesn't happen reason. Sure, I guess he could have invited Andy as cover in case her apparent suicide was ruled a murder, but he had almost no time to use the puzzle box for that purpose. Andy sends the threatening email on May 11th. She was murdered the next day, and the puzzle box was delivered to everybody on May 13th. My friends, my friends. Oh, and also two people you aren't expecting to see and will somehow be consecutively shocked by, even though you're scanning in their direction for much of the next few minutes. Hey! Hey, bro. Not here. But you are here. And unless Trooper Wagner from Knives Out has a twin brother we don't know about, but Benoit Blanc somehow did, I'm gonna need an explanation as to why he doesn't immediately recognize your face. Oh. Little known trivia, Brian Johnson had his friend Joseph Gordon-Levitt voice that sound effect, marking the first time his giant dong has been on screen. And that seems like a sin. Oh my God, it's full of stars. <laughs> 2010, here yeah, we make contact. Explaining your Kubrick references. Be patient. Initiative comes to thems that waits. That's from Clockwork Horn. Um, here's Sydney. Lionel, you are too sexy to be a scientist. That's scientist -ist. You remember that night you almost pancaked me with it on the road outside of right? Anderson Cooper's birthday? When this conversation is flashed back to later in the movie, Duke clearly says Andy, and yet here the Andy is missing. And this is weird, since we don't know Andy is dead yet and that her twin sister is playing her. I suppose the movie doesn't want you referring back to this later before it reveals Miles as the killer, but it's a pretty massive cheat. Also, Duke doesn't even bother to correct Miles over this, even though he doesn't even know Andy is dead yet and has no idea how to benefit from that knowledge. You never know when shit's gonna go down. The slogan for the American Plunger Society somehow clogs up the script. Will you break more things? Break bigger things? Are you willing to break the thing that nobody wants you to break? Ryan Johnson, you sneaky bastard. Miles doesn't realize it, but he's drawing the exact blueprint Helen will use to finish him off later. And this screenplay is so brilliantly intricate that I'm gonna have to disrupt the sins and remove one more. I was really planning to like Andy until she started sarcastic clapping her way into the conversation. That was some real red pill stuff, Miles. Using a Matrix pill reference to win any philosophical argument, no matter what side of the argument you're on, cliche. It's a dangerous thing to mistake speaking without thought for speaking the truth, don't you think? Preach, baby, preach! I could either take another sin away for saying it or add one for the seeming lack of our culture's ability to hear it, or I could just say... Twitter. During this entire sequence, before the murder mystery dinner, Benoit finds himself in all the perfect places to witness all sorts of important information at just the right time. I don't know how the f*** he does it. It's f***ing insane how much pertinent information he receives during his walk around the mansion. I guess he can see her, but she can't see him? I know she's putting her hat on when he turns the ass cheek, but how does she not notice the face in her peripheral vision when she's looking this way? Also taking your attempt at cracking the case too literally. This is a smokeless garden. Having this kind of a system, but no signs that tell you not to light up in the first place. That's uh, Jeremy Renner's small batch hot sauce. <clears throat> I let him invest. He sends me like a pallet every year. Take a few bottles. They'll also come in super handy when you need to make it look like not Andy is bleeding to death later in the movie. So by all means, pocket the hot sauce for no other reason than that. I apologize. I don't know your drink, but, you know, pick your poison. Remember these words for later, folks. I think this will be very interesting when we find out that Miles is Tyler Durden and that while there always was a Roy, there never was an errant counselor. Or, come on. Wait. That's impossible. I agree. Look, I love everything about the setup and payoff of what the Mona Lisa means to this movie. But, but I don't care how hard the pandemic hits, no one is renting it out without a man detailed to oversee its protection. My mom took me to Paris when I was six years old. Skip. Yeah, why not? As Watson said to Holmes. It was Bertie who planted a remote device on a crossbow in revenge for you stealing her signature Ren Diamond. <laughs> Must have been really hard to find someone who would paint Kanye West this way until Miles ran into Kanye West. Ruining your headlines alliteration by having one P word start with an F sound. I hired Jillian Flynn to write the whole thing. Oh, she's quite good. She's goddamn expensive, is what she is. For someone like Miles, there's no way that hiring Jillian Flynn to write his murder mystery party could have in any way been that expensive. Hell, Gone Girl's movie rights were bought for 1.5 million, even if she requested 10 times that figure. That's a whatever expense for him. Blanc is now going through all the murder Miles motives for everyone on the island except Andy, who he knows is Helen. Seems like that would be the one to lead with, and leaving it out seems like a careless and unblancian way to draw attention to her. 
Wait. Earlier when Miles explained how the Mona Lisa protection worked, he said after it was set off, it had to be released by pushing the dunce boy down here. But now it's just automatically resetting after a couple seconds with no one pushing it. Why? Also, if the sound of a phone alert sets it off, how is it not set off by the music or even conversation? Why is the protection sound based anyway? My life was taken away from me by someone, by everyone in this room. Dragging Peg into this nonsense. Duke's smiling. Yeah, we find out later it's because he just got a Google alert that Andy was dead. So you're telling me that Duke, Duke of all people saw that news and instead of freaking out about who was impersonating a dead woman on the island, he immediately figured out that Miles killed her and came up with the plan to blackmail him for a TV slot? This makes none of the sense on so many levels. Everything works out in the end. You just gotta keep the faith. I saw Keeping the Faith back in the year 2000 and I can say without hesitation that you shouldn't go anywhere near Keeping the Faith. This is a nice sleight of hand here when Miles gives Duke the glass of alcohol that's going to poison him, but it sure makes me wonder why we couldn't hear Duke say Andy a minute ago if we're gonna cheat the viewer. Also, Miles really puts a lot of stock in the fact that this switcheroo won't be noticed by the people in the room and the audience, but especially Duke, who already has a drink in front of it. Luckily for Miles, Duke wasn't holding his glass like he has been for the entire scene, or this doesn't work at all. Duke takes exactly 10 seconds to go from taking a drink to full anaphylaxis. And that's just too fast. It can happen within two or three minutes, yes, but 10 seconds is what happens when a movie develops an allergy to inconvenient medical realities. My guess is something was put in his drink intentionally. How is no one here immediately on the pineapple train? The plot needs everyone to think it's poison so that they could be misled that Miles was the target. But this is clearly an allergic reaction, and Duke's aversion to pineapple is public knowledge. Boat can't come till low tide in the morning, 6 a.m. at the earliest. Do they understand the situation? Do you understand the situation? I understand Miles' boat captain doesn't want to make the trip because the dock is a piece of shit, but cell phones work, right? Duke was getting Google alerts. Why can't anyone call the police? Plus, there's a dead guy. Swim the last few feet, slackers. Oh, that is... That's your glass, Miles. I know the movie cut to an extreme close-up of the glass, so we could clearly see Miles' name on it, but how the f*** can Birdie read it from where she is? Andy got a personalized glass just like this one earlier, and Duke's was obviously similar. He picked up mine. Sorry, guys, but I'm not watching this in a theater. I'm watching it on Netflix, so I decided to rewind to the scene that is being flashback to here, and I noticed that Miles gave him the glass, so case solved. It's not 1933 anymore, bitches. Where's Duke's phone? It just dinged. It yes. must be here. Despite this phone having constant Google alerts the rest of the evening, it conveniently only chimes the one time Miles is near the body so as not to give him away. When did his gun disappear? The movie tries to make me believe that the guy who sees everything somehow missed the gun being taken from Duke. Aha! Here's my phone! Cool. So why are you using the screen as illumination instead of turning on the flashlight that you were bragging about earlier? Benoit now runs after Andy and they end up running into each other in a place where the killer just so happens to be perfectly set up to shoot her. Helen! Helen? He called her Helen! We don't even know that name yet, and the movie is subtly giving us a chance to know something's up. Still, Blanc doesn't know for sure that no one else is around, and that doesn't seem like a mistake he would make, considering all that's on the line. We only need one last piece of information, and only you can... Being this accurate through glass with gloves on at night. And that's before we even get to the convenience of the bullet stuffed by a meaningful object cliche that's coming up later. Also, even if you're a dumbass like Miles, why would you take this shot from behind the glass with a witness? Haven't you ever played poker, Worm? It's called picking a better spot. All the suspects arriving to the scene of the murder cinematically and simultaneously. Peg, radio the mainland. Tell him to send the boats now. Does Peg have a more persuasive tone of voice than Lyle does? Didn't they tell him they wouldn't go out there because Miles only has a low tide dock? I think you're gonna have to give her more instructions, right? Underneath this transition to the second half of the movie is the fugue that Yo-Yo Ma was so kind to come in and moss playing to us earlier, indicating that the movie itself will now play the same tune underneath itself for the second half to reveal hidden layers of musicality and meaning, because apparently I didn't hate Ryan Johnson enough for being a genius yet. Of course, it should be another sin off, but my spite will turn it into a sin because I too have hidden layers. <laughs> Why did Helen leave the hammer inside the box? Well, what do you do in Alabama? I teach, third grade. So a lot of zooming. Something tells me that in the not so distant future, all education in the United States will be known as zooming. Miss Brand, what can I do for you? The question for me is how did Helen find Benoit's address in a short time and why did she go straight there instead of making a call first, especially in the teeth of the pandemic? Andy didn't commit suicide. She didn't leave any note. Maybe Helen doesn't trust the cops detectives who handled Andy's death. Or they didn't believe her story. But it'll be nice to hear that from her before accepting the fact that she immediately went to Benoit Blanc for help. 2.45. But earlier in the bath it said 2.39 on the laptop. And that scene went on another two minutes. Meaning you were still in the tub at 2.41. Not only that, but this scene started two minutes ago at what should have been 2.43. 
take another 30 seconds off or walking from the bath to out here, and I'm sinning that there is no human who should look this put together after being in the bathtub with a hat on 90 seconds ago. Google said you are the world's greatest detective. So wait, it didn't give you a bunch of fictional detectives like Batman or Sherlock Holmes? How did you refine your search to get Benoit Blanc so easily? I've not seen your sister's death in the news. Did, did you release a statement? No. Was I supposed to? Does it require a statement for everyone to know about the death? This is a celebrity, or at least someone well known. If I pulled a few strings, I could keep it from leaking to the press for another week. Keeping the death of one of the most famous women in the country secret because Blanc is going to pull a few strings. You're going to have to explain this string theory to me, or I'm calling bullshit. You cut your hair, you wear her clothes. Oh, you really think I can fit into that shit? Helena must have that Christian Bale power from the prestige where she can tell the weight difference between twins when there isn't any. I'm a detective, Helen. I'm not a bodyguard. I'm sorry. I can't help you. Blanc rightly realizes he's putting Helen in harm's way and calls off the plan for about 15 seconds until she convinces him to put her life back in jeopardy by showing him her revenge boner. Now come on, walk me through these journals. And do it out loud and in a voice that almost sounds like you're narrating some really important movie exposition. About 10 years ago. Believe me, I tried to read this journal. Even if I could make out every word, it's hard to think it has anything to do with the story Helen is about to tell. Something about indulge, to imitate them, suggest you are under their spell, and maybe some sort of technique she used on her friends, but hell if I know. This is a very mysterious journal entry and I wonder why we even get a glimpse at it. You know, I wanna, I wanna be responsible for something that gets talked about in the same breath as the Mona Lisa. Forever. What does that even mean? Oh sure, we can question the meaning of this, but Benoit doesn't even bother to ask what the hell... His first venture was movie phone for foot massages. Means. I have been studying this napkin for what exactly Andy and Miles turned into the company called Alpha and why it's such a huge deal, but I guess the movie's answer is they got into crypto and that's all we need to know. So based on the napkin idea... Helen and Blanc are now expositing out loud through a second public location, even though they should probably be on the down low because cinema, baby. There's no doubt that James Baxter is the best journalist writing about capital E entrepreneurs today. But can we just for a moment recognize that when I frequently hear the word entrepreneurs out in public, I think it's the French word for sexual intercourse. This outburst of destruction will lead to finding the all-important napkin. And I don't think this destroying things when you're angry will lead you to the answers message is good for the kids. And you know how much I care about the kids. Too bad that when they show Andy writing this email, the subject found it doesn't capitalize the it, like the one we saw earlier did. You must be really great at Clue, huh? It's just a terrible, terrible game. Well, my students love it. You play Clue with third graders over Zoom? I signed off on putting clear in a manned mission. Yet another time where Benoit or Helen got in perfect position to hear something that could be important to the case. You're telling me that it could literally turn people's homes into the Hindenburg? How the f*** had she not talked to Lionel about this yet? Like, if she cared more about people's lives or her reputation than the money or getting elected, wouldn't she have asked the science guy of the group about the danger before signing off on it as governor? You didn't even write back! I never email anything that I wouldn't want to see on the front page of the Times. That's why I called. We all did. Claire says she didn't email back because she's a politician. But what is everyone else's excuse? Did they not email back so that the movie could put everyone at Andy's house on the day of her murder? And when we couldn't reach you, I went to your house. Lionel and I got there at the same time. Duke was already there. Let me get this straight. After at least a week of no response, the three of you just happened to show up at Andy's house at the exact same time? That's film astonishing. Sorry. Um, that's plot amazing. Damn it. One more try. Oh, that's convenient fantastic. There it is. He almost got in an accident on his motorcycle he was driving so fast. Andy, I almost got pancaked. Since both of these characters don't have any idea that Miles killed Andy and that Helen is playing Andy right now, why is Duke still not mentioning that the person who nearly pancaked him was Miles? Yes, Miles interrupted him earlier to say Anderson Cooper's birthday, so maybe he feels the need to keep his mouth shut? But keep his mouth shut about what? That Miles was at her house for a murder he doesn't even know happened? Also, he's obviously told this story before to Claire, and he was about to ask Miles if he remembered him nearly pancaking him outside of Andy's house before with no hesitation. So doesn't Claire know that Miles was there too? Or was Duke being careful about mentioning it when he told her? So, do either of you two what? want to do a session or what? So they came in here and Serena was already on the screen, sitting completely still reading a book. And she didn't say hello or anything else when they entered. Why the f*** not? Dukey, how's the peeping? How's the pe- Oh, um, Benny, how's the peeping on the pe- Oh, sh um, fake Andy? How's the peeping on the peeping on the pe- Oh, Okay, that's too many peepers, I'm out. Are you gonna do it for me? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Not that. Cornish interrupt us, the perils of whiskey, I guess. The YouTube channel's dying, he needs the exposure. Look, I barely believe Duke heard this sh through the window, but I really don't believe Benoit or Helen heard it from their vantage points. At least have the window open, for God's sake. The envelope. 
whoever killed your sister took that envelope to protect Miles. I mean, maybe, I guess. But how do you know Andy didn't hide it away to where no one could find it? it? Seems like a bit of a leap to base the entire success of the case around it, no? They'll have to hide it in that room. No, they won't. They could hide it anywhere on this island. You sure are doing a lot of assumptioning tonight for the world's greatest detective. Search their rooms. Yeah, but aren't their rooms opened using their biorhythm monitors? How the f*** does she get into them? He deserved what he got, and you are better off without him. Boy, a good thing for the movie that Helen, fresh off her argument with Duke, had the presence of mind to say, He's a son of a whiskey. Leave his ass. So that there could be a misunderstanding during this scene when Helen has no idea that Duke is dead. It's the catalyst for Miles running out of the room and getting everyone separated so that Helen Andy's attempted murder can happen. Helen lies dead just long enough so that whoever tried to kill her doesn't know she's alive. Oh, look, we finally arrived at the bullet stopped by a meaningful object cliche. We made it, guys! The killer thinks you're dead. And somehow we have enough time to talk about it and rub the Jeremy Renner hot sauce on your clothes before anyone comes out to see you alive. <gasps> wow, the way sound carries in this place, you'd think people would have heard that, but they don't. Why exactly would you keep the red envelope or the napkin for any reason? I know you don't expect anyone to rummage around your room in a house on a private island looking for this thing, so it makes sense why he thought it would never be found, but sh man, he could burn this thing and it wouldn't hurt you one bit. And that's exactly what you do in front of everybody later. Look into the clear center of this glass onion. Oh, idiots. Ignore his lies, everyone, and think clearly now. What did we all actually see? Well, you assholes didn't see sh as far as I'm concerned. You weren't paying attention to whether Miles handed Duke the glass or not, because that's not something people pay attention to or tell themselves to remember as it happens. Right out in the open, he told us. You remember that night you almost pancaked me with it on the road outside of Andy's? Anderson Cooper's birthday. Yeah, I only open for a few of you, but not at all for the people in the audience who didn't hear that Andy sh the first time through. What is reality? <laughs> Kate Hudson, that's the sin removal. Why would he still be carrying the phone around? All right, he's an idiot. But how are you smart enough to take the phone, but not smart enough to ditch it afterward? He didn't need to hide the death. He just needed to hide that Duke had shown him the death moments before he was killed. And for Duke to just so happen to have a pineapple juice allergy so that he could kill him quickly. It's so dumb, it's brilliant. No! It's just dumb! Writing a line so hilarious, sneaky, meaningful, and brilliant that it will become a meme misused to defend all sorts of dumb sh thus becoming an ironic Ouroboros eating its tail in a never-ending circle of brilliant stupidity. How could you ever prove that that's the original? She might have copied mine. No, the bar closed nine years ago, and hers has one thing that George just doesn't. I'm not entirely sure that would still prove it, actually, since someone could simply have old napkins sitting in a drawer in their house. Someone could remember the pattern or the logo on the napkin and recreate it later. And if you think that's too much work to forge proof, think about the motivation someone might have to take control of a billion dollar company. I'm not a lawyer, but I certainly would put a lot of doubt into people's minds until someone discovered I didn't have a license and he kicked me out of the Burger King. But this is the real world. And in the real world, you need more than a neat little detective story. You need evidence. And you've got nothing. Nothing? What about the fact that Duke told everyone your car was seen speeding away from the crime scene? Or that you were caught red-handed with Duke's phone? Or that everyone just saw you burn that napkin? I'm not saying it's a slam dunk case, but there's certainly enough here for a jury to make it interesting. He's right. The contents of that envelope and his possession of it were our only physical evidence. Yeah, but you guys f***ed that up, right? By merely taking the envelope out of the office and showing it to everybody in the big reveal, that ship had already sailed. Because all I have to do now is say, envelope? What envelope? You mean the one Andy's twin sister produced and nobody saw where it came from? I'm kind of surprised Benoit didn't tell Helen about the chain of evidence here. Anywhere you go, it's going to be your word against mine. How do you think that's going to go? I think it's going to go about like it went for Andy. Jesus. Sure, but I bet Lionel here is willing to wait for it. And so begins a finale of destruction. But if the plan is to blow the place up, why is she starting with all the little shit? I mean, I know the story reason because it lines up with Braun's disruptor speech earlier. But for the purposes of this plan, it's really just wasting time. Also, to be clear, there is a very large chance that this idea planted by Benny and executed by Helen results in her own death and the murder of several people. The fact that Blanc lights this fuse and then walks to safety is some pretty top shelf dickishness if you ask me. Also, also, over two minutes of smashing sh Two minutes! This is somehow just as long as Limp Biscuits break stuff and maybe, weirdly, I can't believe I'm saying this, not as satisfying. 
The fact that any fire safety systems wait until the script says it's time to kick in is some bullshit. Fire safety systems can't even read. Also, I love how when they finally do kick in, they do absolutely nothing to stop this small fire except make the fire look more cinematic in the rain. Hindenburg. Everyone who hasn't been murdered already survives this. Now the movie's going to waste time on a full minute slow motion race between Helen and Miles with the Mona Lisa's fate in the balance, complete with the Nat King Cole song and everything, followed by 30 seconds of Edward Norton anguish. After the movie revealed all of its secrets, this smashy, smashy, explody, fiery ending is f***ing exhausting. Also, burning the Mona Lisa just because some asshole owns it. Did you get the son of a bitch? Being this casual about attempted murder. Or for all you know at this point, actual murder. Be careful. Lionel, you're a scientist, not a publicist. Damn it, man, I'm a doctor, not a torpedo technician. Listen, kid, I've been hearing that crap ever since I was at UCLA. I'm out there busting my buns every night. Tell your old man to drag Walton and near up and down the court for 48 minutes. I need danger, the hunt, the challenge. I need... I need Nas. I need Nas. I just wanted to say that. We got a great weekend. We have a great show for you tonight. Janelle Monae is here. Someone reset the box. Dad's recycling the crap out of that box. You want revenge? You want to slit Miles' throat? You want to take us all down? What? Just drop the bombshell. Say it. Say it. I want the truth. You want to hire me to go to that island? It's a stupid idea, right? Listen, I want to be clear. Huh? I'm Batman. Look me in the eye, Claire. You know it's a lie. Answer the question, Claire. It's 30 minutes away. I'll be there in 10. There goes the friggin' Mona Lisa.